Hello YouTube, hello everyone, what's up the world? How's everyone doing? I hope everybody's doing good. So, welcome back to this other time lapse uh, where I'm going to be just making some general comments on the videos uh, recorded while I was working. I think that this is what I'm going to do. This is going to be the format. I think uh, it makes more sense to do it this way where I just basically make some general comments on the on the lengthy video that I'm going to be posting. Uh, I post the lengthy videos because it helps uh, look into the details, look at the speed with which I, I, I work uh, at normal speed where you can look at where I click, uh, what I, you know, what I do. Um, but, the t you know, in those videos, I think I'm not going to be talking as much because uh, it's quite exhaustive to be talking for three hours, four hours plus and stuff like that. So it's just not easy to stay focused while you're talking for so, so many hours. So I think the better format is probably to make some general comments of some of the things that came up to mind when I was modeling that I can uh, explain uh, in a quite relatively faster time like in the model itself um so where are we so um as you can see i'm uh, basically decided to wrap things up to basically do all the fine tuning and touching the final elements uh, that were incomplete uh, basically the shell of the model is there the structure was already there uh, uh, so now what's left to do is just uh, fill in the remaining uh, small items that complete the picture basically so here for example you can see I'm just focusing a little bit on the stairs um, so uh, but the stairs are still not complete uh, the, the, the drawings don't tell me the whole, the whole information so uh, I'm still looking to see there is some information in other places that I have not yet been able to see that would tell me exactly how, you know, how all the stairs is made up of. But other, otherwise, um, you know, there's always room for improvisation if you don't get all the information. So let's say you think that you know it doesn't make sense for a stair to be floating and the, and the, and the PDF does not tell you how to create some stairs. Uh, that makes sense well you would have to be a bit inventive and creative in that sense and uh, I looked at some of the pictures so there are different ways that the, you know the stairs can be thought of so this is not a set in stone uh, idea basically uh, changing my uh, focus onto the kitchen cabinets trying to see uh, trying to you know, add some relatively small objects like you know the kitchen sink and, and uh, some of these small elements that will print well because the main intention is that you want some of these basic generic elements to to look well when you extract the drawings uh, in the different views, different elevations, different plans, uh, just like in the AutoCAD itself, but with much more accuracy because uh, during the modeling, of course, you know, I noticed a lot of places where the, the DWG, the, the 2D line work was not exactly, exactly accurate. So this happens, and so this is why uh, modeling in 3D has its own advantages as well. Um, so this particular area where I'm trying to model this kitchen cabinet is particularly interesting because as you can see I freak out doesn't have a way or I didn't find a way to snap the 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 the, the arc from the center to, you know from an existing from an existing drawing. So I decided to draw some lines around it but eventually I had forgotten that I had drawn a sink before and what I was really trying to aim for was the, was the corner so I'd say oh my god what am I doing uh, and then I just uh, switched to the other way to model uh, and get those, arc, those arcs uh, those filleted arcs just by using a simple square so sometimes it happens that you might forget a way that you used to do it and sometimes you know 
there are many many ways to, to do something it just depends on the, the direction you choose uh, when confronted with a specific uh, issue now I might add that you know this brought me to sometimes think about uh, probably you know having an option for the line tool when you draw a line you know it asks you do you want to pick a line you know um, or do you want to pick an arc or do you want to pick from an existing line you know uh, because for example uh, the option is already there you just have to find a way to program that in that's one of the things that I'm looking to and aiming to, to find out how to program uh, for example when you use the dimension tool the dimension tool allows you to pick the line to pick the line and it will dimension from there so I'm thinking that uh, finding a way to combine that tool with the line tool where the line you pick the line uh, you select the line and then there's an option that tells you all right you want to pick the line and you pick the line and then it's probably continue to if there are many lines so if there's arcs shapes splines or whatever kind of line instead of having to to attempt to draw all of them just like in Revit Revit has that option uh, you just basically draw the line by picking the line so again here I'm thinking that it's probably good to model a little bit of the elements here because I'm looking to have some kind of very clean reading on the plants so investing a little bit of time in modeling uh, some of these elements can make a difference now I'm not particularly proud of the way that the sink came out with having those four corners you know look at that it's not exactly the way I expected it but it's a bit cleaner um, but I'm still gonna think of a better way because those four corners are not exactly you want it to be smooth all around you know um, not exactly sure how to to take it out uh, but that's how it came out so but overall I've noticed that Freecad has you know been improving so much that it's hard to keep up with you know there are so many new tools that I am aware of that I have seen but that I just haven't had the time to play with and that is my bubble that is mind-boggling the speed at which FreeCAD is evolving and so I can't wait to start you know making my own contributions to this evolution um, but there's so many new interesting tools uh, I played with one uh, for example the, the, the survey tool has this ability to now save in, in, an, in an excel like sheet format the dimensions and the areas that you take that's amazing and then you can also um, you can also copy uh, to the clipboard whatever you dimension so whenever you dimension something from somewhere you can copy that and then whenever you're entering a unit somewhere you can just paste it I mean that's fantastic that is just fantastic um, So again, I'm just taking the time to model these small issues just because, you know, I wanted to read a little bit well. On the plan. My mind is like, oh my god, find something to say. Don't, you know, don't leave people hanging. <laughs> I get to do that in the long videos, but uh, I'm trying to always find something to say in the shorter videos uh, in the speed labs to keep it interesting at least uh, so that there's at least a video where uh, I get to speak and there's another video where uh, you know it's just me just focusing on doing you know modeling and probably uh, uh, looking at areas where uh, they, you know that I could pot potentially do a, a, a YouTube video tutorial on it on that specific feature by itself uh, because I model as I learn on a model as I go as well you know it's part of the open source 
Alright, so this is an example of sometimes when free cat can can be lagging. Uh, I'm not very sure sometimes what is doing that. Uh, so so that's one of the disadvantages of free cat is that you know sometimes uh, you know it's going to do these heavy calculations and just freeze. And so it happens. It has happened to me that I've lost so much work. You're gonna notice, for example, because uh, I've already recorded this other video, which I'm about to also talk a little bit about it. But on that video, I I model the stair, the stairs completely, the, the front stairs. And for some reason, this free cat froze at some point, and it and I had to close it or it crashed for some reason. And so, um, I, basically I lost 1 hour and 42 minutes of work, basically. So I had to redo it. Uh, so you're gonna see it now. It might not be so bad because redoing it means you're slightly a little bit faster. Uh, so it's not a, such a bad thing. Uh, but to think that, you know, of, you, you, you get around a lot of these trouble bottlenecks where you have to re record uh, because it's you have to record a video or or redo a project because a, it crashed uh, because you know the program uh, so there they can be sometimes some of these discrepancies but it's, uh, it's a question of um, it's a question of, of tenacity you know So you have to, you have to st stick your ground. Okay, so here I'm playing with the sections. I'm trying to model a few things there, but you know, by playing with this, it gave me an idea of a section box, uh, an idea for a section box like that of uh, Revit. Um, the idea would be that using the the space tool, you know, something like a space tool, the space tool. Where you can just create a box or, the, or any shape, any any random shape of your of that you want, and and put it in a folder. The folder behaves just like a section where you can create a building structure and drop it inside that section so that the section knows what it has to cut. In this case, this the space tool, which in this case uh, is our section box, which has a shape that we can alter and tweak at will. Now you can basically um, tell it, okay, um, show everything outside of you, or show everything inside of you uh, in a Boolean-like fashion. So it's going to behave just like the section view, uh, just like the just like the section cut, just like this. So here you see I use two section cut to cut the front, uh, to cut the top, and to cut the side. So, but um, but the two. Will, you know you want to get from all kinds of directions at will um, so imagine you had a sphere not a sphere that might be a bit too crazy but even if you can do that that would be good um, uh, you know again it's lagging a little bit here but so the idea here is that that shape you know could be m manipulated and a bit more like Revit so you can create a folder where the folder has the property of cutting, you know, of hosting all the different kinds of section cuts or section box that you want. And so in this case, you have the different squares or the different shapes that are located in different areas of the buildings. And this can probably also be good to create details, you know, de details of a small area, section of a building um, that you put in a small box. And that you want to zoom into it and display on the floor plan it's as well so now that section box can have an option of on off or show outside or inside or something like that and it can also have fading or you know fade or no fade that means that the part that is not supposed to be shown can actually still be visible but have is a type of texture that is very very you know semi invisible so that at least you can see that it's there but you know you can control the opacity to show how much of it you want to show or not um, I think that would be very that would be very interesting too uh, something I am thinking about uh, in my 
my list of things to think about uh, that kind of section so um, and I also think that extending some ap some uh, applications of the current section to would be very interesting as well um, adding uh, you know, similarly the similar some similar features as well so we're getting towards the end of this video uh, I hope that the quality is pretty good by the end of it when I get to check the quality if not I'm gonna have to redo it again uh, but in any case uh, I guess I'll talk to you guys in the next video in the next speed labs in that case I wish you guys a good one